What is up folks, Stephen here from Moving to Canada, and yes, you guessed it, today we're looking at the eight things to know before moving to Whistler. Winter edition. Sometimes all I think about is you, late nights in the middle of June, he always been faking me out. So the first thing that you're going to want to know about Whistler is how to get there. Obviously, because otherwise how can you live there? You see, Whistler is located in the southern Pacific ranges of the Coast Mountains, about a two-hour drive from downtown Vancouver, weather and traffic dependent, of course. And it is one of the most amazing drives that you will ever take in your life. Don't believe me? Now, if you don't want to do the driving yourself and don't have a great friend who's willing to navigate while you scream into a camera, then you can always get one of the numerous private shuttle buses that go from Vancouver to Whistler, which are about $30 each way. Or if you are feeling really bougie, you could fly via helicopter, which will only set you back a measly $4,500 one way. Yeah, we, uh, we didn't get sign off on that for this video. Now, here's the catch when it comes to living in Whistler during the winter months. With the influx of staff coming to work through winter in Whistler, housing is limited. And limited housing means expensive housing. This is what most people think of when they think Whistler. Disney aesthetics and ski in, ski out accommodation. Well, that all comes with a hefty price tag. According to the website Nombeo, for January 2023, you can expect to pay upwards of $3,000 per month for a single bedroom apartment in the Whistler Town Centre and around $2,800 a month just outside the town centre. Want some space to stretch your legs and cook a 12 course meal for you and your mates? Well, if you have a casual $8,000 a month, you can snag yourself a three bedroom apartment in the town centre, or for $4,500 per month, you can get something a little bit outside the centre. But that's all with the hope that you can actually find somewhere to rent at all. Because when the snow starts to fall on Whistler, this town starts to get very busy. Some of the best places that you can go to look for accommodation is good old fashioned Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace. But regardless where you do your house hunting, just be aware of scams. There are lots of housing scams in Whistler. People who try and get deposits or first month's rent by renting properties that don't exist or that they don't even own. Be careful. And remember, if something is too good to be true, it probably is. So make sure you protect yourself and your bank account. Which actually brings us to jobs. Whistler's popularity is seasonal. It's best known for being one of the most amazing ski resorts in the world. The town attracts people from all over the globe to live and work on the mountain itself. This means that if you want to live and work in Whistler during the winter months, your best bet is to find a job with the ski resorts or in the hospitality sector. Now remember, while finding a job in Whistler during the winter can be relatively easy, you probably want to make sure you find a job that is suitable for what you want to do in Whistler. Be conscious of what the days off are like. Do you have to work night shifts, odd hours, that kind of thing. Some employers outside of the Whistler Blackcomb Resort will offer staff cheaper accommodation or season passes as part of their employment package. But just be careful because this means if the job doesn't work out, you can end up losing these benefits. Each winter, the town expects around 10,000 new people to enter the community to pick up seasonal work, either as a lifty, bartender, or even a snowboard instructor. Which means it's time to talk about friends and that warm, fuzzy feeling you get when surrounded by the people who care about you. <laughs> now look, I live in Vancouver year round and that city has a bad reputation when it comes to being unfriendly. Whistler, on the other hand, is different. From chatting to the residents, it appears there are two categories of Whistler residents, the locals and the blow-ins. The locals are, as the name suggests, local, living in Whistler year-round. The blow-ins are the work permits and the newcomers who descend on Whistler every year, say for a season or two, before bouncing out. See, Whistler is like a transient town, which means if you're planning on calling this place home for longer than a year or two, you should put in the effort to get outside your own social bubbles and be friends with locals. There are tons of Facebook groups in Whistler to use to meet new people, like the Real Whistler 2023. So make sure you put yourself out there and become a part of the community. One of the more common complaints people have when moving to Whistler is the party and drinking culture. If it's not your thing, you're going to have to try extra hard to make some new friends. YouTuber Happy Alice suggests volunteering as a great way to integrate with the community. 
as well as advocating for library-run events, like games nights, movie nights, and more. On a side note, the libraries in Canada are unbelievable. So now that we've got all those new mates, we're probably gonna wanna travel and explore a little bit, right? Like I said, Whistler is about a two hour drive from Vancouver. But if you don't wanna travel as far as that, there's always Pemberton, about an hour to the north of Whistler, and Squamish, an hour to the south. BC Transit operates in Whistler, connecting the village, Creekside, and neighborhoods to the north and south. They also offer free shuttle services to Marketplace in the winter and the upper village year round. The schedules vary throughout the year in accordance with seasonal demand with extra services in place when the resort is busy. A single trip fare is gonna set you back about two bucks 50. And if you happen to be watching this and you're aged between one and 12 years old, then good for you because you ride for free. Oh, sorry, let me try that again. Go, go, ga, 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 ha. There is even private shuttle companies like Skylinks and Epic Rides that will offer round trips from Vancouver to Whistler. However, after speaking to many of the locals, it appears that a lot of them advocate for the good old fashioned sticking out your thumb and hitchhiking method. There's really only two roads in and out of Whistler, so who knows, maybe you can stick out your thumb and make a new friend along the way. Just be careful, a lot of weirdos out there. The sixth thing you need to know about if you're considering Whistler is climate. Firstly, Temperatures are approximately seven to 10 degrees cooler on top of the mountain than in the valley, but are fairly moderate throughout the winter season, rarely dipping below minus 10 degrees Celsius in the village, with today being the exception where it is currently minus 20 degrees, with a real feel of minus 30. Realistically though, you can expect about minus five degrees Celsius as your average daily temperature during most of the winter months. This kind of climate means you're probably going to want to come prepared clothing wise. As far as what to wear for the great outdoors, just remember that you are in the coast mountains of British Columbia, and the weather can change dramatically throughout the day, no matter what the season. Now, I've gotten a lot of flack before for mentioning the cost of rain jackets in Vancouver. Rain jackets here are expensive, and I can only assume that everyone is living in crippling debt to be able to afford one. But I stand by what I said. Outdoor clothing is pricey. Hats, gloves, good quality hiking boots for waterproof soles, these are definitely advisable. But if you want to go all in for the waterproofing, you should look into Gore-Tex. However, be warned, it usually comes with a hefty price tag. If you do happen to forget something at home, don't worry. Whistler has plenty of shops and clothing stores where you can find everything you might need. Just don't expect it to be cheap. When it comes to eating out in Whistler, you have plenty of options. Kind of. Yes, there are tons of restaurants and bars that serve the never-ending stream of visitors to the town. But if you want to live in Whistler and don't want to eat out three times a day for every meal, grocery stores can seem limited, which makes sense. Whistler is sitting at just over 2,000 feet of elevation, so getting large supermarket chains to set up a shop for a very tourism-driven town isn't easy. Now, you still have access to supermarkets if you do want to cook for yourself, but the prices in these stores can be more expensive than on the lower mainland. And that is saying something. Now, I know what you're thinking. Are they actually going to talk about living in Whistler and not mention the proverbial elephant in the room? Well, of course not. Our final tip is nature. Whistler gets around 39 feet or 12 meters of snow per year at its summit. The snowfall is one of the biggest appeals for anyone who is making the move to Whistler. Dreams of waking up to shred on some fresh pow dance in the locals' heads. And being so close to some of the most beautiful landscapes in the Northern Hemisphere is pretty appealing. It's good to know though, that if you are planning on moving to Whistler to spend your days in the mountain, a ski pass can set you back around 180 bucks a day, and even more if you need any rental gear with that. You can of course buy a season pass, around 1200 bucks or so, depending on the bells and whistles you want. But in short, snow sports is not a cheap hobby, so best be prepared for that. If alpine sports isn't the vibe though, Whistler in the winter offers ice climbing, dog sledding, and even the world famous peak to peak gondola to soak in the sights, where you may even catch a glimpse of one of the many bears that call Whistler home. One of these days. Well, folks, that is all from me. Let us know down in the comments if you're planning on making the move to Whistler and make sure you're subscribed to this channel so you can be one of the first to know when we release our summer version of Living in Whistler. Until next time. Shall I be concerned? My nose is numb. It's fine. Okay, uh, this way now. Am I too squinty, Max Quintesson? <laughs>